It's Don here from the board and today's video we're going to be having a look at some airbrush shenanigans. Now in the last video that I released in regards to the airbrush I was able to test and show that the unit that was sent to me courtesy of Banggood was working. Uh, there was a little bit of some weirdness in regards to the amount of airflow that was actually coming out of it and where it was going into the actual compressor plus the adjustment valve didn't really do much pretty much cut it off from air and no air uh, and of course I didn't open up this which was the air kit I did test to my satisfaction it probably didn't show very well on the actual camera that you can use it to dust a keyboard at least surface dust probably not very deep cleaning so I'm going to actually crack open this uh, cleaning kit because I want to use it as a holder for the brush noting that I'm going to need all the space on the table to play with the actual airbrush and liquid and I didn't want the compressor sitting on there so it's going to be off onto the side and the airbrush holder that it comes with sits on the compressor so it doesn't really work whereas this is meant to have a holder so I should be able to use that so I'm just going to have it open we've already seen the other video what is meant to be in here and so we've got some cleaning needles so it's a variety of sizes to suit the actual brush we've got some brushes that will go in to clean it uh, we've got a, another tool that should have some pins on it there we go so very sharp to actually clean any blockages make sure that's nice and safe box and then here we've actually got the pot itself now there should be a holder for it which I'm hoping is inside there we go and a filter now this is actually really surprising because it's glass I was actually expecting it to be plastic uh, it's frosted as you can see so that's a, a nice surprise, although of course that's a bit of a risk when it comes to shipping it internationally, if you have to get it shipped internationally. And here is the actual brush holder and a filter that is meant to... So they've already got one in there, but they've given you a spare filter so that any spray and fumes will not come out through that pot easily. So I probably shouldn't lose that filter uh, so I've got a little bag there from before I'll just put that cloth filter into there and put that with the other bits and pieces so you can see it's got a bit of a, a shield here so when the nozzle blasts into there it will hit that and drip down and then of course that's just more of a fume protection there is an o-ring inside here to ensure a seal so you don't get liquid coming out and I don't know I think that's meant to go underneath where's the box what does it look like okay so that's like a, a holding handle so that should just oh, squeeze in yeah so it's quite firm that's just a handle go and I guess it stops the pot from falling over because it's pretty much at the same height as the base of the pot and then that should be that way that way yes that goes this way Whoa. okay and that's as far as it goes so I take my airbrush and I put it in there there we go it sits now that's pulling because of the actual cord so I would expect that to now sit in fairly straight and it does and we can see that you know if I did 
have a lot of weight on that and it rocks on that sorry if i'm a bit faint because i was sort of sitting back there uh, it should prevent the whole pot from going over so so that's cool okay so i'm going to put that to the side here and then the rest of this can go together now i'm not too worried about having to use these parts to clean it for the moment because i'm going to be using water soluble uh paint well it's actually fountain pen ink so i shouldn't have any blockages because i'm just going to run water through it which i've got over here and it should be fine so let's just put that over there now what i am going to have i'm going to be very careful because i've got liquids here is um we're just going to have to start with just a bit of paper and what I've got here is a cardboard box that was my sort of spray booth previously. It's just a cardboard box and you'll see there's the, uh, the spray from other activities that I've done. So I'm just going to gently move that into frame uh, and that will sort of serve for any overspray and whatnot. <clears throat> And to start with, I'm just going to put a sort of blank piece of paper and <sighs> we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to be working with today is uh, I've got some, some blue fountain pen ink. This is uh, Franklin Christoph Blue 72. We've got a massive bottle of this. Now, for those who are fountain pen ink connoisseurs you might think it's absolutely sacrilegious for me to do this and to use this but to be honest with you um i treat my inks with essentially i treat them with respect but they're there to be used right then plenty of people draw and sketch using fountain pens and therefore ink as an art medium is should be free for whatever and not just fancy writing now i can't imagine that there's going to be people who are going to be getting upset about that but you never know. So I've got just a fine blunt needle. It's like a cosmetics needle that I got from uh, Daiso. And I'm just going to suck up some water in that to start with. Oh. Supposedly like half a mil is heaps in an airbrush. I don't know. I've never used one. And obviously my airbrush is now off screen. Uh, but I'm going to take the cap off it. I'm going to load it with half a mil of water. So you can just see, I've just got it at half a mil. There's water in there. Okay. We'll just put that aside. Half a mil barely fills the bottom of this, uh, this airbrush, by the way. And on goes the compressor. Oh, power would be good. Okay, so now let's take it out of this holster and try it. So, so that's air. Is it wet? Not yet. Okay, so we can see that there is actually some wetness that's happening in a line. Now if I open that up, I think I'm already out of half a mil. <laughs> let, me, let me have a look. Oh no, there's still water there. I think it just ran out of uh, puff, actually. So this, this hose line is... Gotta hold that up a bit, I think. Because obviously I shouldn't be working like this. But now if I draw it all the way back, right, there's no air coming through it. So if I push down, it should give me a full blast. Now we'll see as the paper absorbs it in how big that blast pattern is. So if I'm working quite close, and I draw that line, we can see it's quite a fine sort of line there, isn't it? And then as I crank that back, that really sort of 
opens up quick. Wow. Okay, so, noting that I've just done a couple of lines, there's actually still some water in there, so I'm just gonna vent that off to the side. Okay, so now all that water is gone, and I'm just blowing up dust now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put in some ink. So half a mil definitely was a good amount to start with. Okay. Alright, so I've got half a mil, I think. This is quite a nice blue. Uh, this is actually a blue that I'm using right now on a day-to-day -day basis at work in my my pen. Alright. Okay, so the blue is in. I'm not going to get another piece of paper because it, that one's not particularly saturated at the moment. Okay, so here is the pen. Get a good hand position. Take up some of this excess slack so I can be inside. So, wow, that's actually quite. Uh, just work at an angle. So, you can actually deposit quite a fine line there and then if I crank it all the way back to the largest and then give it a blast <laughs> okay so that's actually quite intense uh, <laughs> so if I start off nice and small and as I go back we can see uh, it's certainly doing the job It's obviously awkward because I'm reaching into this box, but uh, now of course I'm getting a bit of that sort of splatter that's happening there, but that's mostly because the amount that I'm putting on is faster than it can be absorbed by the paper and so it's actually spreading out on the surface. So I guess if you want really fine detail, you've got to go small and you've got to go very steady, but it's it's laying down a very sort of fine amount, so fine that you can't really even see it on the camera from there. But if I pick this up and move it close, you can see it's just depositing very, very small amounts just over here just uh, in, in general. So I'll use a clean sort of corner here. You can do some, some really sort of gentle shading uh, as you work with that. So, so I've done quite a bit there just whoop, to start with and well, you can see there's still heaps in there. So half a mil is definitely a lot of ink to play with. Now, I'm not going to pull that ink out and put it back into the bottle here. No way, because that's you, you just don't contaminate your ink that way. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to paint a keycap blue. So I have this uh, this hot glue rig that I previously used. And I say hot glue because that's exactly what it's held with. It's just paddle pop sticks, a couple of different slot positions that I can put in some more paddle pop sticks where uh, I have just some junk stems glued onto a paddle pop stick that goes into the keycap and it allows me to do that. Bit of a uh, DIY hot, <laughs> hot glue goodness there. So let's... Uh, Let's just do a side and just see if we can do a bit of uh, even coating there. So start off with some air and then just pull it back. Oh, 
Well, that's quite nice. That's given it a really good sort of shade up to it. And then I can just go over it again to increase that color depth. Of course, if you're doing things right, you should always have overspray to make sure you get even coverage. Okay, and of course you can see that some of that has actually oversprayed because of the airflow, which is kind of expected. The top of it's got a bit of that uh, overspray as well. Well, maybe it's not focusing so well, but it is there. So that's working out all right. Let's see how much ink I've still got. Still got heaps. Wow, half mil definitely goes a long way. All right, so maybe let's try doing some, I don't know, stripe pattern. Obviously, I've got very poor control, uh, but what I can do is I can I can coat that, and then I can just work one spot and just make it darker by laying down more and more ink on top of that, so we can see that there's a bit of a contrast happening there. Could probably do a bit better job than that. Um, maybe this this light section here just go over it slowly I think what's happening there is that because I'm laying it down while it's wet it's actually pushing it to the sides and you're getting that sort of lighter center line but then the ends are striping up yeah so it's starting to run now because I'm just saturating it Okay, so we might as well just uh, finish off the ends here with a bit of a, a blast. So let's just crank that back. Just a bit of graffiti fun. All the way back and a, a shot blast. Maybe let's go for some very fine lining. Okay, so there is one ugly um, airbrushed keycap. But you know what? That's okay because uh, anything that I want to do with that, I can always just take all of that off. I can put water on it because it's a water-based medium. It's just going to spread out. Now, we're going to come to the cleaning. So you can see in here that there is actually still heaps of ink. Now, of course, for the purposes of what we're doing, Yes, it's going to be a waste, but if you were to, um, you know what, let's just cover this thing generously. Look at that, it's laying down heaps of color. It's a beautiful, intense blue. Nice, even coat. I think I've actually, I've run out. Okay, so so now, I haven't coated my fingers too badly. We see that uh, the majority of the, the ink is actually gone, but there's still some lingering around. And so this is perfect for us to do cleaning. So into the cleaner it goes. What we're gonna do now is take that water out and leave that in there. So the pot comes back into play. We're going to take that off. Right, so now I've got some water. I'm going to draw it into the syringe to clean my syringe as well. I'm just going to fill this up. And Blast that through. I 
it's quite slow. That delivery rate, even at max, is uh, it's quite slow. There we go. It's starting to get down now. You can hear the compressor over here. So what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to take that out and just inject my uh, almost cleaner blue water straight in there. So now that most of that's cleaned out and I'm going to have kind of clean water in here now, let's just uh, give that a bit of a rinse, flush that down. Probably should have put that in the holder first. giving it a good good blast there. Now I can see you're not really able to see it until I turn the bottle sideways um, but the actual blue is actually hitting and the air that's blasting it is swirling it. Now the air is actually coming out the top there because it is compressed air I can hear it and I can also feel it and you can sort of hear that as it's, as it's coming through so let's just take that out and for the moment I'm just going to give it a tilt um, you can't really see it very well then because the color is related to liquid so it won't sit down. But let's just give it a little bit more of a top up with some fresh water not through the nozzle. Okay, and then I'm just going to give that a bit of a swirl. Oop, probably should have done that. All right, not too bad. And into the front it goes. So now, if I get a clean piece of paper, okay, so here's a clean piece of paper, and I full bore that. It's pretty clean. There's a little hint of blue on the bottom there, but. You know, if I'd actually used a cleaner and not just water, I would expect that to be to be good. Okay. Whew. That that drone though is is quite spectacular. You probably don't hear it very well, uh, but it will get on your nerves after a while. So, I'm just putting that aside. Now let's open this up and see what we've got inside. As you would expect, it should be pretty straightforward, but uh, there it is. Full of blue liquid. It's all been aspirating against that plate, against that plate there. That plate there. <laughs> uh, and I'm not seeing any sort of evidence of blue or misting on this side. So it is swirling around and it's all collected there. So definitely does its job, nice and simple. It's quite sturdy, it's well made, it seals well. Um, I would have no complaints in using that at all. Which of course now I'm not going to bother putting that on too tightly because I'm just going to have to go and rinse it and clean it. So the end result is we see that uh, <clears throat> the airbrush definitely works. I don't know what size nozzle it is but you can get sort of some finish detail on it I suppose if you have the very fine finger control and you can get large coverage and <clears throat> using that we can get quite a lovely uh, sort of spray and coverage as seen by this sacrificial keycap which is now going to be Franklin Christoph Blue 72. Now once this actually fully dries uh, I actually have some clear matte spray some acrylic clear coat so I'm going to coat that with a clear coat and it will just become another artist in my collection I guess unless if anybody's interested in buying it well please let me know I'm sure we can make something happen so there you have it um, I'm just going to turn the power off to that
and I'll put this up here so we can see what we're talking about. So that concludes part two of this Banggood airbrush kit, uh, which is all of this stuff, and then the actual cleaning pot, which is all of this. Now, of course, there are needle tip tools and there are brushes and things like that for actually taking apart the airbrush and cleaning it fully and proper. But at this point in time, I don't really need to do that because the water soluble uh, fountain pen ink won't cause gumming up. As you can see, it's already blown clean water, clear through, no issues, and it should dry out with no problems. Of course, I can always take this apart. Uh, there are instructions and details on taking out the needle and cleaning it and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I don't really need to do that at this point in time. There we go. That's just demonstrating that it's pulling the needle back. So there you have it. Um, yeah, it's it's actually lots of fun. I can imagine spending a lot of time practicing with this to get some really fine detail and control, or if I just want to be able to cover a large amount of area and go over it like I did with that keycap, it would certainly do the job. The only thing is you probably want to get a pair of earmuffs because at 60 decibels for 30 minutes it's going to drive you nuts and you know i've been running this what 22 minutes uh or thereabouts maybe this is feeling quite warm so what they're saying about running it for half an hour and then letting it rest to cool down is probably well heated advice if you want this unit to last i still don't know where it's pulling the air in from uh which i would love to know because i could open that up and give it more airflow but it seems to do the job. I can't test if it's 10 or 13 liters per minute, but does it really matter? Probably not, unless if you're using something that's quite viscous, but then just use a thinner for your actual paint. Rightio, let's uh, see if I can keep this video under 30 minutes. So thank you again to Banggood for supplying this. Certainly exceeded my expectations. I wasn't 100% sure what to expect. And hopefully if I have an opportunity to start coating some caps and maybe paint and some other stuff keyboard related I'll be able to use this kit to do that and worst case scenario I can always set this up to dust off keyboards with ease so if you like this kind of stuff please smash that like button if you want somebody else to see this stuff please hit that share button and if you've somehow come across this YouTube channel and you are not a subscriber please click on that subscribe and the bell button for notifications whenever new videos come out don't forget we have a podcast series on mechanical keyboards, which we try to do an episode every month. Uh, and we also have a Slack group as part of our community to hang out and chat with other keyboard enthusiasts. So get in contact with me here at The Board Podcast if you'd like to know more. So, of course, thank you for checking out the video. And as usual, until next time, happy clacking.